What's up, all of our boggies out there? It is episode 42 of Your Brain On. God, 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 God. God, 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 God. God. We are in the sixth part of our relationship series, and we've got wonderful Cliff and Antoinette Murray with us, and we're going to be talking about marriage. We wanted to bring them in because they have a beautiful marriage together um, so that they could talk about their experience, their journey with marriage, and then also through their marriage. We talk about common misconceptions and ideas uh, that we get about marriage and ultimately bringing God in uh, to our deeper relationships, our intimate relationships, our romantic relationships, and our marriages uh, so that we can see wholeness and life come out of them. So it's going to be an amazing episode. Uh, Enjoy. We have Cliff and Antoinette, or Antoinette and Cliff. (laughs) Either or. (laughs) Like Priscilla and Aquila. (laughs) (laughs) On the podcast, thank you for being here. Yes, thank you for having us. This is amazing. Yes. (laughs) I like the little claps. Thank you, thank you. Oh man, it's good to have you guys here. Uh, why don't you uh, share a little bit about yourselves for okay. uh, yeah the beginning for all of our boggies out there? What would you like to know? Um, your passions, okay. your drives, okay. your work, wow, your loves, <laughs> wow. Uh, okay, Ooh. just tell us a little you bit about what? yourself. <laughs> yeah. Cliff, why don't you go first? How long are these? <laughs> these usually go. <laughs> you want to go first? Um, sure. Uh, I was born in 19... 19- <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. I would say that... Um, um, yeah, w- well, I'll speak for myself. I was going to say we're b- both creatives, but I'm a creative. I love uh, my um, creating, and usually that comes out in expression of music and writing music and songs. Mm-hmm. But I also love... Um, Growing vegetables. I have chickens. I like being outside. I like cultivating. Um, I like, you know, going for long, <laughs> long walks. <laughs> long walks. Yeah. It's Pina true. coladas. <laughs> yes. Dancing in the rain. Yes. <laughs> um, I was going to say, um, um, why can't I think like of it? Trail running. Runs. I like trail running. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, especially sweet. a new trail I've yeah. never been to, but. Yeah, I love just getting out on the trail and rock hounding with the kids. So um, rock hounding. Yeah, so that's where you you find places where it's legal, and then you you collect just cool specimens and bring them home. Okay. Um, oh. You know, so we like to find l- little gems or you know quartz, whatever. Yeah, rock right. hounding. Yeah. But I'm I think I'm very earthy. You know, very earthy. You know, I like yeah. grounding. I like being in the dirt on the earth yeah. in mm. in the wild. I like that kind of stuff. Um, if you were a bender, you'd be an earth bender, you think? 100%. 100%. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, so COVID was a, a, an interesting um, opportunity that I'm, I'm very thankful for to be home in a way I never was for the kids. You know, mm. I was in the Navy for 13 and a half years on active duty. I got out in February. Right. And um, I'm in the reserves now, but... Um, COVID happened and because my job was not essential. I was a guitar player in the Navy band. They had us working from home for a couple weeks. Mm -hmm. That turned into a couple months. That turned into a year and a half of us almost not going to the office at all because San Diego County where I worked, it was very, very COVID Mm -hmm. heavy with the restrictions. So we did, um, instead of public performances, we did like recording projects from home and we'd send some, you know, the sound guy would mix it all we just started creating content online and kind of wow. shifted what we did for a while but all of a sudden i was working from home and i had these opportunities to be around we homeschool and so um rock counting was a something that was birthed out of that i was uh, my son jacob was playing minecraft and he wanted to learn about mining and mining gold specifically so we kind of got into that and that got us into geology and learning mm-hmm. about all that and anyway so um and that was cool because it got me reconnected with something I used to love to do, which is running trails, mm. being hiking, being in, mm. in nature and stuff. Yeah. So it was just beautiful. It was like, oh, I forgot, you know, about this. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was a neat aspect of that for me. Um, I don't know. I maybe more will come up, but that's kind sure. of the main thing. I just yeah. love, I'm a homebody yeah. too. I love being with my people and mm. being around and I love to travel, but then I love being back. Mm-hmm too so it's like i have to make myself plan to go and do things because if it's up to me i'll just sit sit and look Mm. at the caterpillars 
wrecking, <laughs> wrecking yeah. my passion fruit, fruit fly, flying. I can't talk, <laughs> you know, or whatever. You know, I got um, these little uh, praying mantis, and they're just so cool to watch. You know how they work and stuff. But uh, anyway, that's a little. That's bit awesome. Of yeah. <laughs> Funny story. I actually did not know this side of Cliff when we got married. So Whoa, I would really? say like one of the fun things about the last 15 years is getting to know him in ways I just, I literally had no idea. Cause when I met him, he was like grungy songwriting, rock and roller. Mm-hmm. Do you have long flowing rebel. hair? He, he did. Inside. He sure did. <laughs> rebel. And now he's staring at praying man- he, mantises. Uh, exactly. <laughs> but it's kind of fun. <laughs> yeah. He's all Zen now. You're like, no, what happened? You're like, what? <laughs> no what's fun is like it's you still get to know each other mm-hmm. and i think yeah. that that is one of the funnest parts of marriage is like you don't stop growing and developing and awakening yeah you know when you're 25 like you're not done right and so i would say like it's been really fun because i'm like wait what like i do not farm i do not garden i'm just being 100 percent. like right. i could probably do an herb garden well but He's like our backyard and chickens and and I'm like oh I don't know right you know? that's awesome <laughs> so that's, that's been cool. a really fun part I would say of the last yeah. like five to seven years is just discovering that side yeah. of him because it's in him it's like from his childhood so wow that's been pretty dope well before pretty we fun. jump into the more marriage oh, yeah, stuff yeah. that's awesome but let's hear <laughs> more about you yeah um okay I feel always terrible answering these questions um that's why you're trying to skip it yeah. you're like let's just jump like into the marriage, stuff. Into yeah. marriage yeah. stuff let's just go <laughs> um so let's see I'm like describing myself is that yeah, what it is, who is just for yeah. people who don't oh, okay. know you actually well, say your say yeah. your name <laughs> so I'm Antoinette <laughs> yeah there you go and uh I'm the worship director at Center Point. I don't know. So yeah, music is for sure my uh, marketable skill and a passion um, for sure. (laughs) And um, (laughs) we're having some difficulties. Um, Let's see. I would, I think I would say I'm, it's very important to me. Like freedom is very important to me. Like not in the sense of like, I want to do whatever I want, but I just, I'm a free spirit for sure. For it's sure. For freedom, mm-hmm. you've been set free. That's right. Mm. Like in a real way. Um, but then, I don't know. What else would you like to know? I don't have blonde hair. My hair is very dark. <laughs> um, I have two kids. Surprise. Two children, Jacob and Abigail. They're absolutely incredible humans. And I think that I, I value like authenticity and um, I love people very much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. Cool. There's me. And for anyone anyone who's not watching the video, yeah. uh, internet has has Blonde colored hair. Yeah. Yeah. Colored yeah. hair. I don't know Just why I wondering. thought I'd say that. I don't know. There you go, yeah. world, in case you were wondering. Yeah. Well, we're so glad that you guys are here. We wanted to have you on because we wanted to talk about uh, marriage. And I'm not married. Daryl is married but has been married for two years, which is mm-hmm. amazing, amazing and yeah. awesome. Yeah. And I don't That's think that, fresh. that, yeah, I don't think yeah. that devalues no. his marriage <laughs> no, but or, his, been years, or so. his wisdom. <laughs> yeah, only two years. It's like, what do you know, right? Uh, but, but we wanted to have people on that uh, had have been on the journey of marriage mm-hmm. on the, is that, is that yeah. okay? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Been on the journey of marriage and, um, you know, have some, have some time together. And mm-hmm. I believe you guys have been married for 15 years, 15. right? That's crazy. And, um, yeah, we were in this relationship series and we wanted to dive into what is, I mean, considered the deepest relationship you could have mm-hmm. on planet earth i guess with okay. another human being <laughs> okay yeah, is yeah, marriage yeah. it seems like that's the the general For consensus sure. right and so uh we wanted to dive into it and get your guys's insight on it but um i think to start that out we maybe just like a, a short uh bit about how you okay. guys met oh wow and then, i'll tell this okay yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> well okay so how we met we went to cal baptist um i am i'll just let everybody in the world know a year older than cliff Wow. Oh, dang. Eight months. So, <laughs> Eight months. <laughs> um, so the cradle. essentially, I mean, I won't go into to all the details, but we had a mutual friend that um, was directing this musical review and neither Cliff nor I <laughs> are necessarily like theater people, mm. but we thought like, yeah, we'll help a friend out. You know, like my roommate was doing it. 
And so I just thought he was the best looking thing I had ever seen in my life. And he is cute. He is a good looking guy. <laughs> he is. He's all right. He's all right. Um, and yeah, we just kind of hit it off and started dating pretty quickly. And the rest is history. That's such a lame story. But yeah, we met at college. Mm -hmm. And would you add anything to that? Yeah, I thought she was gorgeous. Oh, oh. Okay, and, uh, two points for you. No, yeah. <laughs> he just went up. And oh, um, <laughs> that's all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. He's like, I, I just, just wanted to make yeah, sure I, just I said like, that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, okay. How long yeah. did you guys yeah. date before I, you got um, married? Okay, so. Enigmatic, is that the word? I want to say a year and a half, including engagement. Okay. So it was mm -hmm. shorter, for sure. Shorter. Yeah. What, how long were, was your engagement? Um, Eight months. Okay. okay. Eight months. Eight months. Yes. So that's pretty quick. It was very quick. Yeah. Yes. And and uh, I think we talked about it a little bit yeah. yesterday, but yeah. why, why was it so quick? Was it just like well, you guys okay. knew or there was things going on where it was sure. like, we got to do this? Well, okay. So for me, I didn't date much in high school. I was kind of like... Um, my whole vision for my life was like outside of my home. Does that make sense? So I was just kind of like, I got to get good grades. I got to get out of here, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and so I sort of tripped out when I went to college. I, it was just complete open freedom that I had been restricting myself from. And mm. I dated a lot. And so I essentially had um, a come to Jesus moment because you know, there's consequences to everything and, and we become, we're like creatures of pattern, so to speak. And so mm -hmm. I had just um, had these patterns that were um, attracting a certain life. And so I remember it was water. I was in water and because I meet God in water. I know that might sound weird, but he like talks to me and I like broke down and I was like, what am I doing? Mm. Like all these relationships that I've been in, I don't want to marry any of them. Right. Anytime they talk about marriage, I'm like, uh, I gotta go, you know? Mm. And I told the Lord, I was like, I'm, I'm being, a, I'm like literally selling myself short here. Like I'm behaving in a way that I am not, you know? Mm. And I told the Lord, I was like, I want a husband. I want children that's in my heart, you know? So you gotta change me mm. to, you gotta help me here. <laughs> And right. like, so then I had just gotten out of a relationship that was very unhealthy. And, um, I mean, God bless them, all of them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I remember I, I told my roommate, my best friend, I was like, this is it. I'm mm -hmm. done. You know, I'm in a season of, I'm not going to do this anymore. I got to, I got to do things differently, you know? And then it was like a month later, it was like four weeks later because that happened at Thanksgiving. So it was longer than that. But then it was the next semester we started rehearsals. And I saw Cliff and I was like, shoot, <laughs> yeah, I, <gotta laughs> I don't know go if back I can in. do this, no, <laughs> right. no, you know, but then it was just cool because I felt like the heart that God had for me was abundant life mm. and abundant life wasn't going to come for me from this, just using people in a relationship mm -hmm. and being used by people in a relationship. Mm -hmm. That wasn't what God had, you know? And yeah. so there's been tons, I would almost say like the marriage relationship has been like, um, super redemptive because like I'm in a big season right now. I'd say the last six months, um, one of the pastors we really love, he talks about like being able to really see yourself in the mirror, really like see your shortcomings and learn to not condemn yourself because Christ doesn't condemn you, yeah. but to see them because once mm -hmm. you see them, you can take ownership of them and it's almost like a separation can happen. Like, like don't my, pretend. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That way you're not like living your life trying to pretend like, oh, I don't have any problems and I'm fine yeah. and yeah. just reacting from a place of fear and insecurity, you know? You don't see yourself in the mirror and then leave and forget what you look like. It's, yeah. Right. Scripture. Yes. Thank yeah. you. Totally. Go, Cliff. <laughs> <laughs> James. But yeah, so I would say like marriage has been this safe environment to mm. constantly cyclically do that where you're able to see yourself and then have somebody who literally like everything is exposed in marriage, everything. Like I would say that's the best part of marriage is naked and unashamed. And I, mm. I mean, 
knew it. Is I knew getting it's naked. <laughs> you have it I here, mean, folks. <laughs> best part of it. It's yeah. funny because obviously, obviously, there's like a physical part of that. But I mean, like in every way, mm-hmm. like yeah. naked and unashamed in front of another person, you right. know, because mm-hmm. that's, yeah, what God desires. So, yeah. Wow. I really, I went off on that. Yeah. yeah there you yeah, go. Yeah. yeah. What was, um, so you guys obviously said that you guys were very like attracted to each other. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then you guys dated and then what was like the, this is going to happen. We're going to get married. Was there like, okay. was there a shift? Cause I think people date sure. for a long time. It was there like a settledness in you that allowed you to shift into marriage? Um, let's see. So it was scary. It was scary for sure. Right. Um, and, uh, I remember it was actually at his parents' house um, because every time it had ever even been suggested in the past. I I can't speak for you, Cliff. I'd love to actually hear you talk about this. But every time it had ever been brought up, and I was 20 at this point, so still pretty young. But um, yeah, it freaked me out. Like, I remember one time somebody was like, I'm looking at apartments for us to move into in Michigan, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I'm going to go. You know what I mean? Wait, what, so when you were dating? Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, I, I don't feel right on the inside. Yeah. I'm mm. going to leave. You yeah. know what I mean? That's a lot. Yeah. So, um, but wait, so what was your question? I'm so sorry. <laughs> what was, <laughs> what was different about when yeah, you guys started? Oh, oh okay, okay, okay. When so, was it? Sorry, just for context, yeah. um, our daughter needed yes. some water. Yes. Yeah. So, Love yeah. you, girlfriend. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. So we were sitting in the computer room, probably working on papers and stuff, at his parents' house. And he said, um, we probably should start thinking through and talking about marriage. Mm. And I remember in that moment, it was the first time I was like, I'm not afraid mm-hmm. of that. Like, so I would say that was a huge shift wow. inside of me that I mm-hmm. knew, you know what I mean? And then, um, yeah, I did talk about this yesterday. Whenever I was with Cliff, I felt at home, mm-hmm. you know, like he's very much home for me. And that was like a feeling, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And so for me, I had like peace, like, oh yeah, I could... Um, oh, I'll tell another story. I don't know if I should tell it now. I tripped out the day before we got married. I'm driving away, runaway bride. And I'm like, you I were need- driving away. Yes. Like you weren't going to get married. hundred percent. Yes. Oh, yeah, you're actually, I was literally <laughs> running away, crying wow. my face off. Right. Oh my and- gosh. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. That's insane. Okay. Yes. That was all. <laughs> 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 so this is like another one of those moments that you're like talking about. Cause, um, I was like, do I want to call this person? No. Do I want to call this person? No. And then I did call somebody and it was not helpful in the slightest. And I was like, I actually really want to talk to Cliff. And like, as I was mm. recognizing that mm. the person I wanted to work out, what I was feeling was the person I was going to marry. Wow. It like made me turn the car around. Wow. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I recognized that what I was hungry for was stability, peace, belonging, and Cliff embodied those things. Right. You mm. know what I mean? So mm. it was like, I could build a life with him. Yeah. Whereas I think I was just freaked out and running away from every other aspect Mm -hmm. of my life. And there was this element of like, it's up to me. I got to get the degree and I got to, you know, do, but then with him, I could be, be, and that's huge. Mm -hmm. What about you, Cliff? (laughs) Could you repeat the question? (laughs) (laughs) That moment that has shifted for you where it was like, we're going to do this thing. I want to marry you. Oh yeah. From like dating to marriage. Oh yeah. So when I first met her, I just thought she's so beautiful. And, uh, <laughs> he just keeps uh, saying this. And that was it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then when we got married, I was just like, this girl's so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> and then every day I wake up, like this morning. <laughs> oh my word. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, and, um, I never, so I, when I first met her, it was like, I had known her already. And so I had to go through my mind and like, where would I have met her before? Mm-hmm. Cause I feel like I've, I feel like I've known her for a long time, you know, like yeah. we already know each other 
and I thought that was interesting and it stuck with me. And then, um, you know, we met a couple times and, you know, did a worship thing at a chapel and then some time went by and, um, every time I was around her, I just was like, man, it's, it's like, um, it's like uh, trying to keep the metaphors simple cause I can get really <laughs> lost in like the metaphors sometimes, but it's like, um, going your whole life and you didn't realize there was a there was a, a piece or an aspect of your life that had been missing mm. and then all of a sudden you're oh. like whoa <laughs> oh i th- i feel like i was made for yeah like you know does that make mm-hmm, sense right. like it's like if you held your breath your entire life and you didn't know you're holding your breath and then you took a breath for the first time and you're like oh i was made to do that wow that feels really good it's something like that like wow. it's hard to it's hard to mm describe it in a more tangible way it's very nuanced but it was very vivid it was like man i i feel like i was made to be with this person you know wow um and i thought that was interesting Mm -hmm. that stuck with me i thought she was um and then there was of course things about her that um i was attracted to um she's very she's a fierce person um intense fire and uh i just i guess i just really uh I guess I just really was um, drawn to that. And um, uh, she'd be like real, uh, like kind of sarcastic and not mean is not the right word. Just kind of like, <laughs> that's not the right word at all. But what I mean is you like. You started out strong. Yeah, yeah. I love how much she belittled, belittled me. Yeah. No, oh, like, no, no her, her sen- <laughs> You started out real strong. <laughs> I love that she was angry all the time. <laughs> <laughs> her sense of humor just i thought it was uh, like, right i loved it it was just f- right. fun and mm-hmm. like um yeah i just i, I sorry I'm, yeah I, I was very drawn to her and ver- like so pretty pretty quickly i in my mind was like ha- thinking thoughts of long term and it was like i mm-hmm. already feel like we're best friends i already feel like right you know and so that was unique too from previous relationships mm-hmm. and like she said I, I bless them all i think that's yeah. really important you know um, and, and release at all of them in, you know, in any way in the past, you know, done that to like, yeah. just have beautiful, wonderful lives. Like, and I, tre- I, cher- I tre- tre- uh, treasure whatever moments with others and in my life that have led to this point. Right. And we've talked about that, not scandalizing things in our past or any person, mm-hmm. because all that does is create negative mm-hmm. things we mm-hmm. don't need but really releasing yeah. that yeah. stuff and going oh wow that was a beautiful part of my journey that led me to here mm-hmm. into right. now and uh but i but or and having said that there was a relationship just previous to meeting antoinette that was real strange and i was pursuing this um girl for a, a while kind of out of high school and into the first year of college and it was weird and nebulous and we were dating, but kind of not really, but we, were we, I don't, it was strange. I never experienced it, but I really was, um, and you know, infatuated mm-hmm. by this person. And it was just the strangest experience. And by the time I just was wrung out by it. Mm-hmm. Right. And I even remember getting to a point where I was like, I kind of knew, you know, that it wasn't the path for me to walk with that person, but I still was fighting that. I was like, I don't want that to be the case, Lord. You know, I want, I want to be with this person, mm-hmm. but, but really sticking with that to the end, it just kind of wrung me out. And I, it yeah. was just like, ugh. I was like, I'm done dating. I'm done. Uh, yeah. I kissed dating. No, uh, <laughs> I was, I'm done dating. I'm just going to focus on school mm-hmm. and, and figure out my life and, Mm-hmm. wear Dickies shorts and combat boots and like <laughs> t-shirts and not shave and a beanie. Like, I'm not going to care. Yeah. Like it worked. It worked. It worked. <laughs> and it ended up getting her. <laughs> the moment you stop caring. Yeah. You yeah. know, funny story. Let me just That's a, that's a something. There's something on that, but yeah. yeah. Talk about that. Uh, our first time we ever hung out, he told me he was in love with this other girl. And I was like, okay. Wow. <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> my boy, no, it's still no, worked out. It obviously <laughs> Sorry, but worked I know out. you're looking at me, but out. I'm in love with someone else. <laughs> oh. I, I think that's um. Both mm-hmm. you guys said it. It was like as soon as um, and I, I've experienced it too. And you hear it a lot. Is that as soon as people usually let go mm-hmm. of like finding that mm-hmm. person, mm-hmm. it's like yeah. it comes. You know what yeah, I mean? And I, it, yeah. it, it mm-hmm. seems like there's so many stories of people being like, "Yeah, I was just like done." You know, like mm-hmm. I was like, "I'm not right. getting into any relationship," and then I met her. Yeah. You know, yeah. or then I met and then i met him and i think 
um, I, I see it as a gift of yeah. God, you know what I mean? And I think it's just mm-hmm. a principle in the kingdom that as soon as mm-hmm. you let go, mm-hmm. he gives, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it's like, okay, I just trust you. You have to do it. And then he's yeah. like, okay, I'll do it, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. And, he, and he brings that. I wanted to talk about why, why God, obviously there's priority reasons. Maybe mm-hmm. God cares about marriage, but mm-hmm. what is that for you? Like God, the, your journey with God and, okay. and yeah. marriage. I know that's a big question, maybe. <laughs> I'll start yeah, yeah. just dropping on Obviously there's and procreation and like not being alone. But those are like Yeah. <laughs> that's and it. being that's na- the only thing. Naked, yeah. naked in front of each other. Yeah, whatever whatever we mentioned that we did, that's a good part of it too. Um I think a really important part and something that in the last number of years, I think we touched on this before, but um has really the revelation of this. Um I feel like revelation, somebody I love uh said, as time goes, revelation grows, you know. And you catch you catch catch a glimpse of something the Lord's showing you, and He shows you enough for that season. But He's always inviting us to see more of it, mm-hmm. you know. And He gave me this picture one time, um, where I'm staring up at uh, a picture in a, a cathedral. I was in Saint Petersburg, Russia, when I was uh, graduated from high school, and we went into some of these cath- old cathedrals there. Saint Isaac's is the one I'm thinking of, and they have these huge domes that are hundreds of feet high. Seems mm-hmm. like. And they're painted somehow with these incredible murals. I mean, just it's wild. It's huge. And he showed me, he's like, it's like you're, you're, he's the painting. And you think about how, who Yahweh is, El, you know, Yehovah Elohim Sabo, you know, El Elyon, the God of gods, you know, the creator of all things. Nothing that was made was not made by him. And he's in all and through all. Like mm-hmm. it's unfathomable who he is and mm-hmm. the vastness. Mm-hmm. But he's that painting and I'm staring at it and I'm trying to understand it, but I'm staring at it through a straw. And and so the revelation is like I'm staring or, or say like a paper towel roll. And so I can see this this part of the painting where there's like fire and 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 or maybe it's a, a torch and I can't tell, but I see fire and it looks painful and it looks scary. Mm. Um, but then I catch a new revelation, a new part of who he is. Now I'm looking at a part and it's like waves and ocean and it's like lovely. And I'm like, Oh no, this is the father, you know? And then he's showing me like, no, you keep looking at different aspects of who I am and I want you to throw that away. And I want you to just look, just, just, he's inviting us to take him in right. and not always try to look at him through these, through a straw, you know? Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's revelation. It's like we get a bigger and bigger straw. Um, I know it might sound like I'm talking about universalism or something, but I'm, I'm not going there. I'm just <laughs> saying we, we see him through such a small scope, mm-hmm. but if we allow him, he's constantly inviting us into a greater revelation of who he really is. And it's just mm-hmm. goodness. It's just so good, the better. But if we're stuck at one and we hold on tightly to one, then maybe we'll all we'll ever know is wrath and vengeance and, right. and, and hellfire and brimstone and flames, you know, mm-hmm. but if we pull back and we get a greater context and we go, Oh wow, it's not, not that, but that's a part of something bigger. who he is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I say all that to say, um, the, one of the rev- aspects of the revelation he's bringing us into in this season is this idea that in marriage, there's a, a beautiful tension between a husband and a wife and the temptation, especially as a younger person for me was, I just need to make sure she's affirming and on the same page as me. She's we're on the same team. She's on the same page. We're always agreeing. We're always whatever. And so, um, and there's maybe a safety in that for a time, but at some point life gets hard and you don't always agree about stuff. And, um, there's a tension and a push and a pull and that's actually beautiful and healthy. But mm-hmm. the temptation is to go, oh, we're having trouble or she, she's pushing back or I'm pushing back. We're fighting. Um, but the design in that now I see is it's this like proving ground or pre- preparatory, academy or so to speak in your marriage because when you go out into the world every day you meet adversaries every day you meet opposing forces Mm -hmm. every day you're you're there's a fence and you have a decision how do i respond in the face of offense do i go on the offensive and and bind everything and go crazy and (laughs) you know what i mean or do i go oh okay i'm offended why am i offended was Mm -hmm. jesus ever offended did he call his disciples to take up arms in offense and go and take the kingdom you know like He's like, no, if it was an earthly kingdom, that's what they would do, but it's not. It's something different and better. And I see that now in marriage and um and of course the revelations come through other, you know, other other people didn't wake up one day and go, Oh, and just get this full picture, but it's mm-hmm. like been developing and it's this idea that actually in marriage there's this beautiful dance of we 
um, are each other's adversaries when it's <laughs> needed because what it does is it brings stuff up mm-hmm. that mm. you can go, oh, wow, Lord, I didn't realize I harbored <laughs> mm-hmm. that. Can you mm-hmm. deal with that? Mm-hmm. You know, God created yeah. marriage to be so you could be adversaries with them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, I, I yeah. mean, in the best way, yeah. but yeah. I, I love actually that yeah. that yeah. language because I think yeah. it is like a it is a mirror to yes. be able to see yourself yes. in, right. and yeah. then you start That's recognizing good. all of those things in you that it's like, why am I so selfish in this yes. area, yes. and why am That's I, a, you know, yeah. why am mm-hmm. you know why am I holding on to this, or why yeah. I'm really insecure in this place 100%. when she says yeah. this or he does this? It's like mm-hmm. ah, you know, mm-hmm. and yeah. I I think that is like a this beautiful thing even to yeah. bring Christ out of us, yeah. you yes. know, like. Uh, that intimate re- relationship mm-hmm. of of cutting and mirroring and seeing yep. to bring him out yeah. of us right yes yeah, yeah. yeah. can, can mm-hmm. we touch back on something so you mentioned like the the journey of marriage and the strife sometimes that comes and that actually helps prove things inside of us and and refine us right and can you tell us a bit about your guys' journey as sure. you've been married for 15 sure. years what have been some of the difficult things? Sure. How have you how have you changed? What was it like before? What is it okay. like now? You know, talk us through some of that. All Take right. it away. How long do we have? No, I'm just um, <laughs> Maybe okay. some key moments. Sure. Or, yeah. um, okay, so um, my I would say, I guess I could have said this earlier when I was describing myself, but, you know, I think the why, like for me getting married, Obviously, like all the stuff about loving Cliff, feeling like he was home, wanting to build a life with him, that kind of thing. But I also very much, I do this in pretty much every aspect of my life. I jump and know I'm going to be, I'm going to be fine. I'll figure it out. You know what I mean? Like that's mm-hmm. like my personality. Like, will you sing seven songs tomorrow? Yeah, I'll figure it out. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like mm-hmm. I'll have four of them memorized. Let's go. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So there's like an element where I'll jump and think later, right, you know, right, so yeah. I, I for sure had that because there there was an element of like unknown, right? Yeah. Okay. So I would say that um, for the first seven years of our marriage, we were constructing our who we were mm. as a couple. You know? How old were you, you when you first got married? I, uh, 21, 21. 21. 21. And 21. 20. You turned. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. He's eight months younger than me. So. Okay. So ish, pretty young. 20, 21. Yeah. For today. Oh, no, you for turned, sure. you turned yeah. 22? Yeah. I turned 22. He and then I, I was 21. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. You're like 20. No, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and March, then, April. so yeah, like the first seven years, we waited four years. Um, I lost a baby, which was like a super mm. transformative experience mm. for me. Um, this is like probably a whole other conversation, but I actually was like sympathetic towards um, pro-choice. And then I had this whole experience and it was such a spiritual experience. And Mm -hmm. like I, I experienced loss. It was, it was a trip and it completely like transformed Mm. me in a, in a really significant way. It was weird. It was like, I'll, we'll tell that story another time. But, um, so I got pregnant with Jacob when we, we had been married for like five years. And you know, part of it too is like, we're trying to get careers going bills taxes like there's a lot of just like Mm -hmm. building life stuff Mm -hmm. that takes Mm -hmm. a ton of time right Mm -hmm. so we're just like and capacity yes and if you don't have and if you don't have peace too that's really 100 100%. (laughs) makes those things very difficult yeah and and it's it's 24 7 and we have friends and you know it's like the whole kind of like early 20s situation Mm -hmm. i joined the navy i was traveling yeah yeah he's gone a ton with the navy and um just you know, still trying to kind of figure out who I am, that whole thing, who we are. Um, But so for the first like seven years, we're like constructing who we are. And then like once Jacob came, that was weird. And that's why I want to talk about kids eventually, because I took a step back in my pursuits. And, you know, and I I had a whole season where I was mom, you know, Mm -hmm. and um, and that, that was like an interesting thing. But it was very much like nobody could convince me to do anything else like they were my focus you know because they mm-hmm. these things come out and they're like 100 percent dependent they cannot survive without you <laughs> you right. know what i mean so um seven years we're constructing actually so then i was pregnant with abigail and um stuff surfaced and so maybe this is what i want to talk about is um we both had sexual things that we kind of brought into the marriage and um, in my mind, it was like, God forgave me the end, you know, like I didn't quite understand 
the residue, my own residue mm. that had, had been mm. brought in, you mm. know? And so he tells me something that, um, from the past or whatever. And here I am, like, I have a 15 month old and I'm like 20 weeks pregnant, you know, and I'm just looking at cliff. And in that moment, a deconstruction started happening. Mm. So we build for seven years. And in that one moment, it all starts deconstructing, you know? And so then we went on a, a path. I would say it was like three or four years where it was survival because mm. I'm, I'm covered in diapers and children. And, um, I don't know about this guy anymore. You know what I mean? Like, mm. but what can I do? I don't work. And, I still love him and look at our amazing babies. You know what I mean? Like there's this element of amazingness, but mm. the things that we had built upon, um, began to break down. So we're hollow in some ways. Yeah. yeah. And it, it was funny too, because we have been faithful to each other in our marriage, but you are so one, like Jesus is not lying when he says mm. in Matthew, like, mm to become one flesh mm -hmm. like and so i would interpret things i was feeling like are you cheating like you know what i mean like there is an element of like a trust breakdown between us and mm -hmm. so just for a little context i think you said it really oh, quickly but yeah um there was something that took place um before we met you know and that that particular instance um more so than maybe the other um um, relation, you know, what do you want to try to say indiscretions or whatever you want to say through, you know, high school and college, that situation was particularly, uh, em embarrassing mm -hmm. and I, I felt a lot of shame and embarrass mm -hmm. embarrassment around that situation. And so that was the situation of all the other ones that I kept to myself and just thought right. naively this, I just will never mention this to anyone the mm -hmm. rest of my life and it'll yeah. just go away. Right. Um, so that's the context yeah. for where she's coming from. Yeah. With what is it? You know, it, it, and I think for me, it was like, it's been seven yeah. years and you've never, you know what I mean? Like it was just weird. I'm like, what else aren't you telling? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Like there's this so element. you found out about whatever that he, was. It was yeah. actually yeah. It was like a, quite yeah. like a unique evening, um, which I don't know if we want to tell the whole story, but essentially he, God literally said to him, you're telling her. And then he, he you give like, go ahead. Like, yeah, it was a very spiritual experience. And I never up to that point had, ex had had a spiritual experience like that. It was very intense. Um, I think it could have been interpreted as like a panic attack or something, mm -hmm. uh, which I'd also never experienced before, but I had like, my chest w felt like it was crushing. I couldn't breathe. My eyes were sunken in and I was like pale and shaking and everything was everything was angering me. I was going to use a different <laughs> word. I don't know. I'm like, everything's, the P word. Yeah. Uh, I was, <laughs> it was make, making me mad. Sorry. Yeah. You're know, fine. Like censoring myself. Um, <laughs> you know, so I'm slamming the, the kitchen's dirty. I'm slamming dishes in the sink and I, I don't, I don't break things. Historically, I'm not a yeller or a fighter man. or a break, you know, but I'm like starting to not be able to control myself. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I wasn't drinking out, you know, I wasn't a drinker, uh, at that time. Now I am. Oh, no, no, I, am. No, I just mean I just mean that wasn't a that right. wasn't a uh, that wasn't the reason part of the problem. I was right. sober, but uh, you know I'm slamming the laundry door shut, doing you know whatever. I'm being very loud, and we're supposed to be at a Bible study, but we're already late. And then she comes down, and and she had just put Jacob down for a nap, and it's like 7 p.m. And I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. We're bedtime. supposed to be at the pastor's house for it was bedtime, yeah. So I was like <laughs> angry about. Um, that which is like i'm angry that we're not going to bible study. it just was weird it's like mm -hmm. not adding up and i'm like just seething with anger mm -hmm. it's the weirdest thing and um i don't remember the sequence of events that led up to this but all through the years um there's this little voice of like you know you're still carrying this and now i look at it and it's like part of the issue is i had scandalized it mm -hmm. in the sense that because i had put such an emphasis on it in that way um I, it, th I then allowed it to define me even mm -hmm. in a way, mm -hmm. you know, and cause that was the big fear that, um, this would affect how people would perceive me and this mm -hmm. would affect how she would perceive me. And I was terrified of that or whatever. Yeah. Um, as if that means anything, you know, cause the Lord's the one that worries about your reputation and is your rear guard and mm -hmm. whatever, all that I know now. And, but at the time it was like, I can't have this be what people think about me anyway. 
but it was like, but you've kept this from this sync, um, sanctified place of marriage and relationship and, and truth and mm-hmm. exposure with this person. And, um, and so there'd be this little whisper of like, here's a good time. And I'd be like, nope. And I just avoid mm-hmm. it for years. And then in the house that night, it was like, in the back of my mind, it was like, you know what all of this is about. Right. And, and since, since then, I, I've, I heard someone say, you know, when your heart and your mind are not in agreement, it's mm-hmm. actually, it causes mental illness. Science is showing that when you're, when what your heart is saying you need to do or, or you know is right, but then in, in your mind, you're making decisions to live against what your heart knows to be good or true or right, that that causes mental illness, you know? Mm-hmm. I think that's just interesting. And so I was experiencing this episode mm-hmm. where, my heart, my spirit was cr- wanting to cry out and just be like, get this thing out and over with for mm-hmm. se- over seven years. I had carried it. Mm-hmm. And then the other part of me, and I think that was my spirit and my ego wrestling, you know, my natural right. self re- wrestling with that. And was like, no, no, no. But it was like, it was beyond. Cause I'd never, we'd never, I never behaved that way. So now she's mm-hmm. come downstairs. She's angry. Cause I'm being so loud. And then she sees me and she's like, oh, like, what's wrong with you like i'm like like having this thing you know and so then i every room she comes into i'm like running away i'm like walking stomping into the next room and she's like chasing me into the next room like what is going on i'm like nothing nothing, nothing." and in the back of my mind it was like the cat's out of the bag now like you can't live this one down and so it was just like i i uh, i couldn't get the words out but the best way i can describe it was i literally felt like Mm. There was something over me like this, and then I felt like something else like had me was standing behind me like this, and uh, mm. it was like this thing was around me and over my mouth, and it was like I just felt like the spirit of the Lord or the angel of the Lord or whatever just prize it off of me, mm. and then kind of like, oh sorry, <laughs> like right. kind of sorry, pa- oh, like she's all, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what I mean, like like uh, that's what that's what you do to a baby when they're choking you. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it was like, I was able to speak. And then I just started stuttering out these phrases that had nothing to do with what was taking place in the room. And she's like, what? You know? And I was like, "Uh, uh, this and this and this. And, you know, and I, um, I just got it all out, you know? And, um, Mm. it was crazy that it took so long, but it was the initial thing was like, whoa, like I felt this huge weight just, Mm -hmm come off of me you know right. and uh but then so i text the pastor i was like hey we're not going to make it to to um bible study you know? <laughs> right. we got some stuff to talk but about. we got to con- we got to connect <laughs> with you yeah i know we should talk about this but can we go <laughs> yeah yeah. <laughs> uh, so then we meet with it. them two days later after service uh, at their house and um they're from singapore pastor uh joe and debbie ong yeah. and they're precious and will always be to me mm-hmm. and um um, just heart to heart kind of yeah. laid it all out, you know, our life stories, you know, from beginning to end in these, in these areas to him. And it just so happened that he, um, had specialized in seminary in these areas of, um, I guess you could consider that, um, deliverance or something, you know, but he kind of has specialized in that, especially in, uh, when it, ca- it comes to like, uh, um, relationships and like of that nature, you know, um, like counseling, sexual pastoral. healing and stuff like that yeah. and, and all that. So it was really, really, mm. it was really like precise. The fact that we were at his church at that time, mm-hmm. you know, uh, because he was able to speak right into all my insecurities. And then also he gave us this clear picture and it was like, you're going to feel really good now. And now she has to process what happened, yeah. what right. you kept from her from before you guys got married and mm-hmm. how unfair that was. Right. To not know everything, have all the cards on the table, so to speak. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's going to be hard. Mm-hmm. And he looked at her and he was like, you know, y- you need 20 to be weeks pregnant. Yeah. You're, you need to be able to forgive <laughs> right. him, but that's not going to be easy. And yeah. it's going to, it's going to be easy. And then it's going to get hard again. And then it's going to be easy. And then it's yeah. going to get hard again. And it's going to be the next and that's been couple of years, the next years. Yeah. Yeah. And that's when he was like, and I think we shared this before. We are here for you, Debbie and I, but as a, small community church we're not really set up to really walk Mm -hmm. effectively with you guys through that um but there's this place called new hope and um you just start crying real yeah there's this place called (laughs) new hope uh but i want you to go to that church and pastor wayne cordero and and what they have going on over there their programs called life change and this and that um 
we want you to partner with that community and get really yeah. plugged in and and that's where we feel the lord is going to walk with hawaii you through stuff this is yeah. in hawaii yeah Oahu. we're stationed in hawaii right so in a roundabout way <laughs> we end up ultimately ended up there yeah kind of avo- for some reason just avoided it for a year or so and it was terrible and whatever at another place so then finally submitted to what he had su- suggested and then it was like the rest is history um but yeah oh, yeah i don't know we really kind of yeah. fell into that aspect yeah, yeah. of the story right. and i don't well, know if we wanted to but that's actually a perfect segue okay. thank you cliff Good. that was yeah. awesome <laughs> great job i wanted to actually talk about i am at this point um you know two babies and I think all of the listeners who have children can sympathize with me in this you know what I mean so I have two very little ones I'm away from family I so I'm like processing everything but I'm also very much in like there's lives now there's four of us it's not Mm -hmm. just two of us you know what I mean okay so essentially he goes through it's a 12-week program it's like Mm -hmm. a deliverance program and I'm like yeah you need to do that you know what I mean? Like, that's like my heart. I'm like processing mm-hmm. and I'm a little angry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're mad. Yeah. You think he should have done something yes. different. You're yeah. like, you deserve this. You 100%. need to go through all these processes. And I'm all like, yeah, you're awesome. the problem. Like, Let's do it. Yeah. I like, yeah. Yes. feeling like a million so, bucks, you know? Right. First As, time you felt light in a while. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah Cause when she's like, this made me heavy. That's the opposite. Yeah. 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 What that did was really, re- and that's what she alluded to earlier was, you know, everything that we had been building upon. Mm-hmm it really just hollowed it out mm-hmm. from the bottom up. And it, it was like this hollow desert underneath. Um, and I'm talking like I, for seven years in the Navy, like I, I didn't have a vision for the future. I, I had no ambition in a positive way. I had no, I just was kind of like collapsing Floating. in on myself, yeah. you know, like a zombie and just kind of going through the motions and just like. Which was really hard too. And didn't know yeah. why. And right. then this thing com- came up and it was like, could that be it? And then walking through this stuff and it was like, wow, yeah. I got this whole new lease on life. And now she, it's like, now she's going to process yeah. and stuff. So the church that they're at, um, the people that run life change, they're like, you know, Antoinette, you should go through this program too, just because, um, as a couple, you'll know exactly like what's going on, but we couldn't do it together because of babies. Right. So, okay. um, so anyways, it's my turn to do it. And I'm, I'm like, I'm just here because they've asked me to be here. I'm fine. You know what I mean? Like that's, I'm just being mm. totally honest. I'm like, I'm a little miffed at this point. It's a good word. Miffed. Okay. <laughs> so week 11 of this program and the program's like fine. Like I'm like, oh yeah, totally. Blah, blah, blah. Like raised in church. This is cool. You know, but mm-hmm. okay. So I'm there. So week 11, they have us corporately, like all the tables stand up. And um, out loud, all together, we repeat a prayer of repentance for sexual sin. Jeez. And so we're saying all these things. And what really hit me, oh, sorry, is that um, it articulates that the sexual sin actually interfered with your relationship and connection with God. Mm. And that we're repenting from that. You know, mm. and so mm-hmm. starts walking through. I still have it on my computer, but every single line, it was like he he just described like a physical experience where he was interacting with the spiritual. You know what I mean? Like he felt like something was around him, and then finally the Lord came and just was like took it off of his mouth so he could talk. You know, so I'm like standing at this table and I'm saying, you know, repeating these lines, and I just felt like wave every line I was saying was like a wave at Waimea beach, just like washing over me Mm. and like all this stuff is falling off of me (laughs) and like memories are coming and then washing away. It was like the Lord was bringing up things and then taking them away, bringing up things and then taking it away, bringing up, I mean, from childhood, from like everything. And it Mm. was like in that moment, he wanted me to take ownership so that I could let it, so I could give it. Right. Do you know what I mean? But it was so quick. It was like, the Lord's like, and this, and I'll take that. And remember this, I'll take that. You know what I mean? So right. it's not going to like ruminate. Yeah. That's huge. Taking ownership. And do, do any more damage. But he also mm. wanted me to see my participation mm. Mm. in where we had come. Yeah. Right. Can you, you know? can you mm. uh, elaborate on that ownership, mm. ownership concept? Sure. Just by when those things came up and you felt like you were meant to take ownership of some things, mm-hmm. what do you mean? It's like not being, That's a vi- huge. not being a victim. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that, um, definitely 
things like, you know, you, you're in a relationship and things go a certain way and then they end and you go, okay, God, sorry. And you move on. Mm, mm. You know what I'm saying? But you don't realize like yeah. Paul says, it's like not just a sin against God. It's a sin against your own body. You know what I sexual mean? Yeah. yeah. Like sexual sin. And, um, Jeez. and, and so mm. I think the Lord, how could, how could I repent of things that I don't think I've done wrong? Right. You know mm, what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. I think he was just bringing up memories. Just to, I had to have context yeah. of the life that I was in. And acknowledging the decisions that you made or the things that yes. you, you were participating in. And like I'm not a victim of these other relationships. Right. I was a participant yeah, in these yeah. relationships. Mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, I'm not a victim. I'm not the one being used. I was using these people. Right. Mm-hmm. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. well, I could get into the mentality of like, they were just using me. They just wanted this. But I'm like, I needed something from them, too. Right. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to marry them. Right. But I used them right. to satiate a need that I had. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, and so the yeah, Lord, yeah. it's like, I get it because the idea of um, the Lord is protecting us from <laughs> literally destroying ourselves right. and destroying the world. <laughs> <laughs> and ultimately and, uh, destroy destroy the world. <laughs> in him all things yeah. are kept together and yeah. kept from falling apart yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I, I think it's, it's um reconciliation there's a um i think there's a big idea in our culture that that marriage is like a cure-all <laughs> oh my word <laughs> um which i think is super problematic I, I, you know so i will Glad say you that we'll up. just get if married you, and then things will be better oh my yeah. word i'm but, telling but you but you bring you bring no. whatever's yes. in you into a marriage yes. and you're going to bring your full self. And yeah. so yes. it's like and it even, even that idea mm-hmm. yeah, and highlighted mm-hmm. and yeah, light shown on it. Yes. And so, um, you know, you might, yeah, you think I, I especially with sexual sin, mm-hmm. I think it's the same thing with, you know, pornography. Yeah. Uh, a lot of, um, I've heard a lot of stories of, of guys and gals, you know, thinking it's like, well, that'll go away once I get yeah. married. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Right. Like this addiction to pornography Nerd. or <laughs> yeah. Or, or this sexual sin here or this, yeah. this lust will go away. Cause it's like, I'll have a person to explore that lust Mm-mm. with. And it's like, yeah. Yeah. and you mm-hmm. end up, you end up bringing all of that stuff, that stuff in. And then I, I love yeah. what God does. You talking about that is, is as soon as we take ownership of that, he never brings up stuff to condemn us. Mm -hmm. He brings Mm -hmm. up stuff to heal us. And that's the whole beauty of forgiveness and Mm. the beauty of the father's heart that I feel like is so misconstrued and misunderstood by people that like hate God. (laughs) It's like, you don't understand how good he is, you know, is that he's bringing up this stuff and memories and all this stuff. It's like, you know, Mm. and they can make us feel condemned, but he speaks a better, better word over that. But but anyway, back to that point, I get excited about the gospel, but back to that point, I think I think going into a marriage knowing that you're yeah. gonna have to work on stuff. You know oh, what I mean? Yeah. And a, a lot. And yeah. you're gonna uh, those things not only will they not go away, they're gonna be highlighted, like you said. You know, yeah. and I will mm. say, in your life, in our life, we're gonna have to work on things. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And and I think the idea of the marriage is if we can let go of our entitlement and let go of our like using. And that was the pattern that I was in, that I had to face. Um, in my relationship, in my marriage was mm. I thought I was the victim of these relationships, but the Lord needed to show me hmm. that I had a, ha, had as much. I, I had Jeez. been influenced by porn. I had been influenced. And so I was mm. feeling entitled and using these people. Does right. that make se- mm-hmm. sense? And mm-hmm. so the idea of sexuality in marriage is sacrifice and the bliss of the other person. That's your mindset which is literally right. the opposite of entitlement and yeah. I'm just getting something from you. Right. And right. before we were recording, you were talking about the effects of pornography in marriage. Right. And can you talk about that a bit? Sure. Uh, I mean, something that both of you ha- had said was pornography is about, in essence, entitlement. Mm-hmm. It's about feeling entitled to something. Yeah. Yeah. But the way that that bleeds into marriage and other effects that pornography has in marriage, because there's mm. plenty of marriages who, who suffer. Yes. Because pornography is yes. is inter- is in the play. I think I it's important. Oh, oh, I just want to say mm. one thing. I think when we got married, the Christian, <laughs> I'm all, <laughs> um, the the mentality that was kind of put into us from the cultures that we were in was this is just a part of it. This is a mm. part of it. What's a part of it? Oh, pornography. pornography. Mm. It's yeah. a part of it. It's not going anywhere. 
you got to deal with it. Um, women were encouraged to like the cultures that I was in, like compete with it. Hmm. Oh, what? Does that make sense? Was that the idea or that wasn't ex- probably explicitly said, but. No, it's not said, like when you get married. Was, no, it was yeah. like, no, I'm, I'm like. competing. Oh, geez. Wow. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Oh, gosh. Yeah. Yeah. And so yeah. that that is in our culture still. Yeah. That mm-hmm. is in our culture. Any amount of pornography that's accepted it rots minds, hearts, and that's spirits. Like science. I mean, science. Yeah, yeah. The science There's is pretty clear on that. that. It rots yeah. your mind. It's, your brain you literally know. changes. Yeah. 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 yeah, secular science is agreeing now. You know, it's yes. across the board. Porn is the yeah, other thing. Like drugs. Unhealthy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, like bad drugs. That mm-hmm. I feel like was taught was there's no way out of it. Even if you want out of it, <laughs> 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 even. <laughs> I think Sorry, I missed, it's, it's I missed because a joke. Said, it's not like, like good drugs. drugs. They're like bad drugs. <laughs> it's like bad drugs. <laughs> you know, which can, you can assume that. He Porn's not like the good drugs. drugs. I take, too, the, I take the good drugs. That's not what he was saying. <laughs> oh, sorry, um, okay, wait. But then the other thing is like that there's no way to be free from it. Right. Mm. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Like because past generations haven't been free from it, then mm-hmm. the theology is you can't be free from it. Oh, like this is what you, the idea is that gets passed on. Exactly. Especially yeah. for, this especially for guys. It. It's like, yes. uh, yeah. I remember yeah. reading part of life. Right. Remember reading books, you know, growing up It's right. called every man's battle, you yeah. know? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah, every man's battle. And yeah. it, which is, it's, it's well meaning it's good sure. hearted, but sure. I, but I remember especially coming into faith at first, right. you know what I mean? It's like, Oh, this is just going to be my life. You know, right. like, yeah. <laughs> like this lust no. or this yeah. pornography is just yeah. going to be like, and I remember once I realized the blood of Jesus actually yes. makes me new, I was like, it's not going to be my battle yeah. one day. Come it on. might be my battle right now, but like yeah. eventually yeah. there's a victory, right? Like oh, this, yeah. this can't be. Yes. And then, and then it was actually that, that actually led me into victory. Come over on. That stuff. Yes. You know what I mean? So, totally. you know, so yeah. it's and a scripting that happens in culture with yes. when it, when you're handed a script saying that this is what you're going to suffer, you know, this yeah. is what you're going to deal with, this is what you're going to yeah. have to learn to live with, yeah. Yeah. and we get scripted from a young age, yeah. just like, like witchcraft. This is going to be it's, a problem. It's a bad word. It's a frequency, our, if you will. Uh, yeah, there's, <laughs> you know, the, yeah. there's power in, in our words, right? Life and death in yeah. the, mm-hmm. it, it is the power, power of our tongue. tongue. But, but, and this might be c- controversial, so I'll just say it and and take it with a grain of salt, right? <laughs> but. It, you know, as Joel, the book of Joel, in that mm-hmm. day, I'll pour out my spirit on all mankind, on all flesh, is what he says, right? Mm-hmm. And we're in the ministry of reconciliation. And so that brings on a different dimension of what evangelism is. It's mm-hmm. it's the Christ in you, the hope of glory. And that's what I'm calling out. Yeah. Because he's poured his spirit on this generation, out on this generation. And, mm-hmm. um, and now I forgot why I so said that. So controversial. It kind of just sounds like. No, sounds no. Like well, that wasn't, <laughs> that, wasn't the, that wasn't the controversial part. Yeah. No, the controversial part is that an unbeliever has the spirit of God Come being on. poured out on them. And then you're saying, yeah. you're saying yeah. kingdom arise in you rather than, rather than Christ in you, rather than you, you have to change this yes. in order to be accepted. Yeah. It's like, no, yeah. you've been changed now. Be reconciled. Yeah. Cause that's yes. the reality. Right. You are reconciled. You are a friend of God. You yeah. are yeah. loved by God. Now just like, believe it. Yeah. Right. Which is spirit has been poured out. Very controversial because we want people to change before want to feel like they we have something they don't and we need to convince them of that as happy as they think they are they're missing out they're that or yeah they are, we've but. got a secret that they don't have <laughs> yeah. right 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 you know and and we yeah. have to convince them that they're awful first you know what i mean right. and i'm just like hmm. i don't know I, and that's I don't why we get do, to that point when i read that's why we Jesus. do those sin mindsets or whatever yeah. Yeah. you're gonna well you're that's gonna why we that. modify behavior right right you know it's it, it's, it becomes evangelism becomes behavior modification right. mm-hmm. and yeah. not transformation by knowledge of the reality of what's happened already mm-hmm. two thousand years ago you know forward and backward for all time you know and calling that reality out that you know what I mean? Anyway, yeah, that's maybe yeah. another podcast, but <laughs> yeah, so, I kind of lost where that was all going. Right. Sorry. So no, good. I get what you're saying. So I think good. that yeah. that ties into why, why we give, um, people basically a, a not a, the opposite of a get out of jail free card. You can't get out of this. No. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or you're bound yeah. by this sin is mm-hmm. because oh, we right. do yeah. believe people are that way. Mm-hmm. And that's so right. there is no room for redemption mm-hmm. because the yeah. spirit of, you know what I mean? Like, but even, but the problem we is that the power even of the tongue, yeah. Is where that was going. Yeah. yeah. But even the problem is that even um 
even once you accept Jesus, we still believe that we're yeah. just we're pretty mm-hmm. much destined to fall no. into that. Mm-hmm. And I think that that there's really harmful views of marriage that I've got mm-hmm. growing up. So mm-hmm. um, I think there's certain mantras that we hear growing up that make marriage so unappealing. At mm-hmm. least for me, mm-hmm. I'll speak for myself. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. uh, uh, w- one of them is just like <laughs> even like the silly ones that you know, like happy wife, happy life, or right, something right, like right, that. Right, right. Like mm-hmm. that maybe like condescending. It, it just feels like so for me it was like the opposite and this might be against like maybe some feminism stuff or whatever i don't know but but it felt like um it felt like uh or the wife is always right it's like Mm. so they she doesn't have to grow and that's what it felt like there there's all these like weird things that we say about marriage it's like Mm. the man just doesn't doesn't Mm -hmm matter or matter something. or something i felt yeah. the opposite of what people feel in culture and in, in marriage of, okay. of those types of things okay. which is interesting yeah. mm. but um but but yeah those types of dynamics or like it's always you know like eventually those ideas of like eventually it just dies out you know right. and that's just something oh good enjoy with the way you see them now because that's not going to be the case right. and it's like yeah. but those type of words yeah. make marriage have made marriage it really hard for me to be like, yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> like, yeah. that sounds awesome. You know, yeah. like, yeah. and it, yeah, I think we have a weird, uh, uh, or maybe just a, an immature or incomplete idea in, in church, in Western church culture of what witchcraft is. Mm. And mm. that's what I was driving at earlier is that God's spirit's been poured out on all flesh. And that means all flesh has the, has the um, ability to create and destroy when they speak. Mm. And we do that. We we speak idly all the time. Right. We speak idly in church all the time, mm. and um, we're not we're not. I'm painting with a broad stroke and saying we, but you know, it, from, from day to day, we think about the things that we say, and we realize, oh man, if if um, the word was in the beginning, and all things were created through the by the word, and we're, what do we use? What are we creating with our words every day? And right. you know. Um, uh, that it was just tying into um, the uh, world is creating uh, and speaking these things. You will experience this. Marriage will become this. You are this. I am. Think about how powerful that word is. I am. I am this. Right. I am that. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. It's that's like your um, your. Um, yeah. Okay. Sorry. That's another podcast. I'm trying <laughs> yeah, to be careful. Sorry. <laughs> Um, there's, there, it's just, there's power yeah. in life of life and death in yeah. the words that we yeah. speak. And, and I, and I don't say that that's a tendency too. I feel like in church is to go when, when we're, re, when we're releasing something God showed us, we release it with this sense of like, so now do better. So I'm not yeah. saying that like, <laughs> right. so now everybody be self-conscious about what you're saying every minute right. of every day. Right. No, I'm saying we're invited into this cool thing of like, oh, wow, let me think more about how I'm yeah. using my words. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's what I feel like is how the Lord operates. He invites us into better. He invites us and woos us into mm-hmm. better, not you idiot, you know? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and I just, I feel like there's an acceptance of a really low standard yeah. of what, because it, we've talked about on the podcast before, everyone's super excited when you get engaged and then they're like, as soon, or as soon as you or before you get engaged, as soon as you get engaged, it's like, now it's going to be terrible. We've talked about that. Like everyone starts speaking words of death over Daryl. It's like, now it goes downhill from here. It's like, you wanted me to get engaged. No, not everybody. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You're saying that that to me is witchcraft. (laughs) Right. And we, and in church, we, we bind witchcraft all the time. But when we do that, we're literally, I think oftentimes thinking of people with pointy hats and, and little bowls and and stones. I'm like, God created stones. Why are we so afraid of these things? Witchcraft is literally, tearing down and destroying someone's life with the words and the intent that we have Mm. because we have the power to build and to destroy. And when we send that word out, that word that proceeds from who we are in Christ, there's power on that to, Mm. to, to increase or decrease, to build or destroy. And so, yeah, that's, that's that whole thing of like, you're right. right. Speaking death is like, yeah, that's witchcraft. Mm. And so that, that kind of shifts, you know, when we, when we hear like, um, uh, maybe somebody who's prophetic will be like, there's a witch, there's a warlock at our church. I'm like, yeah, there might be a lot of warlocks because we don't quite understand what casting spells is, what magic is. You know, when we're all running around speaking things like, well, the best years are behind you and stuff yeah. like that's mm, witchcraft. Mm, whoa. You know, for me, it, it's, it's, yeah. a, it's shifting like, whoa, the whole thing changes. Now it's like, we got to 
instead of hunting around a play, I'm trying to find the warlock. You know, it's like, no, it's not. It's not like that. The to warlock's me. in me. Sometimes. <laughs> well, to me, it's like, yeah, it's like, yeah. Anyway, yeah. yeah. See, that's a whole nother thing. But yeah. yeah, yeah. There is something about speaking life, right? Mm-hmm. You know, Toby, Toby Mac. <laughs> Toby Mac. Oh man, I used to love listening to Toby Mac. Oh yeah, one of the Momentum three bands I was baby. allowed to listen to. <laughs> um, yeah, whenever uh, just to touch on what Aaron was saying, whenever I was when me and Brittany were dating, everybody's asking, "Oh, are you gonna get yeah, married? Yeah. Are you gonna yeah. propose?" Yeah. And everyone's really excited, and you know, which is awesome. Yeah. And then we got engaged, and some, not everybody, but some sure. people were like, "All Oof. right, get ready. This is gonna be hard." Oh. <laughs> people are hilarious. You're like, wait, what? <laughs> and that's it's, like their passive way of being like, I. I'm really struggling right now. Right, yes. and that's and that's something yeah. that I <laughs> had a cry for help, maybe. Yeah, that's something that I had to recognize. You know, it's like yeah. recognize that some people do struggle in marriage. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have plans in struggling in my marriage. Yeah, of course. But yeah. I plan on I, I I'm I know that yeah. struggle is gonna come, mm-hmm. but yeah. I'm not planning on just sitting through struggle and letting right. it happen. You know, yeah. it's like I want to lean in and, and grow from it and get better and yeah. and learn to love Brittany better. But when yeah. people would say that to me. I would take it with a grain of salt and I would recognize, hey, they've had some hard times and maybe they're not in a good good. place right now. But there are marriages that I've seen Mm -hmm. that have been for decades, decades and decades that are alive and thriving and they're more in love now than ever. Yes. And seeing that it's possible to be in love with somebody years and years and years and years down the road. Uh, gives me the hope knowing that, hey, it's possible. I don't need to do this. Almost like the breaking free from pornography thing. Yes. It's like, oh, wait, I don't have to struggle no. with this. Yeah. <laughs> like it's possible to be free. Yes. Yeah. It's seeing marriages that are healthy yes. gave, gave me the the, uh, the enough confidence that I needed right. to know, hey, it's possible. Yeah. And Testimony. even if it's difficult yeah. and marriages struggle often, yeah. Yeah. I don't need to settle for that no. because what is good yeah. is on yeah. is possible and I can, I can continue to move towards that. Yeah. And even if 90% of them or suck. I'll take that one. Yeah. You know what I mean? That one that's good. I'm like, it's possible. You know what right. I mean? Yeah. 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 Then I'm going to do it. I'm going to do yeah. it. And, and yeah. to, to seek after yeah. that, why would we settle for anything, anything less? And I think that's what, yeah. that's it for me, not being married with Abby right now. Mm-hmm. Cause we're like, you know, thinking about yeah, it, yeah. maybe talking yeah. about it a little bit, which is awesome. Shout but out to Abby. Woo. Yeah. Shout Abigail. Um, Abby Gail. Okay. Um, but, <laughs> but just, just talking about it more, thinking about it more yeah. is, is, uh, uh, won't he do it? You know what I mean? It, Said he would. <laughs> yeah, you know? Come on, but, somebody. But to, to not not receive all those things, it's like, I am not mm. going to recreate no. the relationships no. that I've seen. Mm. I'm going to go after... The, mm-hmm. And, and I, I've said, we need to pray prayers like this. God, make our relationship the best relationship the world has ever seen. Yeah. And I'm straight up like praying yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, and I'm like, yeah. I mean it. I'm like, yeah. I'm like the best. If we get married, the best marriage the universe sure. has ever seen. <laughs> I'm praying like the biggest <laughs> prayers like yeah. I can yeah. ever pray yeah. and yeah. make me into a man yeah. that would be the yeah. best husband the world has ever seen. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And whatever you have to do, do that in me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. To, to pray that and to, because I've had to reshape my idea of what that looks like because because i've seen things they look really great on the outside that they're like you know they they kind of get torn down you know i said this yesterday to um you guys but you know i really believe the path to that is facing the fear yeah Mm -hmm. so it's like whatever you fear the most cliff feared telling me Right. Like it was the scariest thing yeah. in the whole world. That's true. But the freedom and the reality came from mm. facing that fear. You mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. my fear. I was is, terrified she would leave. Yeah. Right. But I had to come to a point where instead of gripping mm-hmm. my yeah. marriage like this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I had to, yeah. Remember we talked about mm-hmm. that. Yeah. To just like let it go. Uh, I trust you, Lord. Yeah. 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 And mm. I, Sorry. I think that, you know, I was thinking about this earlier today. I told you guys that I was like, what marriage in the Bible is ideal? Like, I'm like, I don't know. Like, I don't know that there's an old Testament or a new Testament couple. That is what you're talking about. Like the best marriage in the land. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like they're all kind of brutal yeah. Yeah. in their own way. Like even the ones that are absolutely incredible, like Mary and Joseph, right? Right. They both hear from God and obey, but he's like 50 and she's like 14. That's weird. You know what I mean? (laughs) It's different. It's different. No, no, no. You know what I mean? Like I just, so for me, the common denominator in all these biblical stories isn't the human relationships. It's the glory of the human relationships as they're loving and knowing God. Right. So like 
Mary like knows God and she's like, yes, whatever you want, do your thing, right? And then Joseph's like, all right, I'm going to obey you. And because of this, they face shame, death, you know, poorness or whatever, you know what I mean? And just God richly blesses them. And through that, the entire world is changed forever, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that there's this element of like, we're going to face that with which we fear the most. Mm -hmm. And that might be one of the reasons we're on the earth is to overcome those things, Mm -hmm. redeem and reconcile in Christ because he's manifested in us. Yeah. You know what I mean? And Mm -hmm. you need to, Mm. you need to face those things. Yeah, Mm -hmm. you really do. You know? And, and I think that what's cool sometimes is like the thing that we fear the most when that moment comes, it'll be fun that it's actually not that big of a deal. Yes. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like you're like, oh no, I kind of resent you right now. I can get over it. Uh, I had the, <laughs> I had this vision a while ago, and I think I maybe I mentioned it on the podcast before, but it was basically like this dark sheet covering me, and the dark sheet kind of represented my fear, okay. you know, uh, rejection, my feelings. I've always been afraid of like what I feel on the inside, so mm-hmm. I like run away from it so much. And uh, in the in the vision, this like this dark sheet, it came over me. And then like, I just seared through it like mm. a, like a hot butter through knife, like the butter, totally. like the butter, the, butter. <laughs> the, the blanket, the dark blanket kind of just like seared through me. And, and, uh, I felt the Lord, um, I felt the Lord speak to me like, um, like, um, when you, when you, em- when you embrace the darkness, you realize that you are but light. Wow. And, um, and it was in facing wow. all of that stuff that you realize, oh, I, that actually wasn't so bad. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it, it, mm-hmm. it because we, we create so yeah. many stories in our mind yeah. about, um, about how hard it's going to be, or yeah. it's going to tear this apart. But really when you're honest about those things, it ends up bringing more healing and connection. 100%. Like e- even yesterday, Abby and I were sharing like really, really deep things about, <laughs> about this kind of stuff, like yeah. uh, sexual sin and, and, mm-hmm. and hard things like that. And, even things that we'll still do now to gain a sense of significance mm-hmm. and control and power to have other people look at us in a in a sexual way. That, it's mm. like what? Like we're talking about all this stuff, and then it's like, wow, that was not so bad. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. it, it was mm. connecting. It's sad. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? But it's also yeah. for for me, it was like this is awesome that we could be honest about yeah. those things. And then I read that next morning. It was so crazy because I had that, and I was like, that was weird. Are are you sure, God? And I read an emotionally healthy spirituality. It's this prayer. Um, by this guy, um, Martin, oh God, I'm gonna, I don't, I'm going to blank. Short. Martin Short. No, no, definitely not Martin Short. Um, <laughs> but it said, he said, Lord, cover me in the darkness of your love. And I was like, I've never heard wow. that ever. Yeah. Like who prays like that? Yeah. <laughs> the darkness of your love. Yeah. But it was about that. It was wow. like about receiving like those, mm. those dark yeah. places or whatever, uh, with joy. And then that's, that's the place yeah. that you realize your light and he's light and he's in you, you know? Michael yeah, W. Smith yeah. wrote that song based on the psalm. Oh, uh, yeah. Even the darkness is light to you. Mm-hmm. It's good. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And then, <laughs> and, and then uh, um, in the beginning, the earth was without form and void, and the Spirit of God hovered over the deep. Mm-hmm. You know? The deep darkness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From that place. Yeah, yeah the chaos. Creation. Life was created. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, let's see. Do sh- Should I wrap up our he story? He invites us into the darkness. A little bit. <laughs> Uh, yeah, what do you mean? Well, sure. like, so we deconstructed. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we this, never like, finished. <laughs> yeah, sorry, we went off on <laughs> I love it. That's it's the way, so yeah, that's the way we so, do it. Yeah. yeah so pulled a lot of threads, but... You constructed, yeah. then a big moment happened, totally. deconstruction happened. Yeah. There's actually only one more point I feel like I, I'm supposed to, I need to get out, and that is that um, our wholeness and our healing and our marriage didn't come from, like, focusing on our marriage, which mm. is interesting. Mm. The the healing in our marriage came as we we focused on wholeness in Christ. Mm-hmm. Like there was very much yeah. an element of individual that led to something really beautiful happening mm. in our marriage. Right. So I would say it was like three to four years of just nebulous. I don't know. I don't know if this is going to work out. I don't even know how I feel about if this is going to work out or not. Mm. Like, am I supposed to be sad about that? I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, mm. am I, am I full of sin? Am I, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. There was just like this really weird limbo time. And then all of a sudden it was like revelation started happening individually. And then revelation started happening um, corporately, like, be- like between the two of us. And it right. almost became like 
Like he would be like, man, the Lord really showed me this. And I'd be like, what? He just showed me that. So then mm. like we're connecting. She'd say it just like that. Yeah. yeah I like to talk like that. <laughs> what? 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 Are you That's serious? <laughs> <laughs> hey. No, no way. <laughs> you mean it? Does that really happen? Does that really it's fine. happen? It's fine. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm good. Um, I'm good. It's okay. <laughs> you guys make fun of me. <laughs> <laughs> um. But yeah, so then that's been like a trip and a blast. And I would say that that's kind of the glue and like permission in the last mm. four years for us to connect in a way that we never really have, mm. which is like authentic. And I was going to say, Aaron, like I kind of feel you where my perspective was like the, I'm supposed to get behind a man. Right. Mm. And so then I'm like rebelling against that. Like, hey, you know what I mean? But then you're hearing happy wife, happy life. Yeah. And you're like, Hey, you know what I mean? Like the yeah. same thing is like rising up because it is an imbalance and it's a lie and you can't build on that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Cause it, it's best done if two people are growing and then two mm -hmm. people could say I'm wrong. You know what I mean? 100%. <laughs> right. Like uh, yeah. if you guys both could be like, yeah, I was wrong in this and ownership. Yes. Right. And they could both take yeah. ownership. So th that's the message yeah. I got is the, it was weird cause it's totally it seems different than yeah. a lot of people's experience. Yeah. But the idea was like, it, there's no ownership on the wife's part. It's yeah, like the man just kind of takes the brunt of it. Yikes. <laughs> right. You're interpreting it as I'm always going to have to be the one apologizing. One apologizing. She's never going to have to apologize no for anything. I always I'm have just going to have to say right. it was my fault. Right. Yeah. Wow. And then I'm not going to get to say anything because she's always right. Oh, that's. Hmm. That would be terrible. That would well, be awful. Well, and, and I know that's what most women <laughs> hear. It was just it was just weird. Yeah. My experience yeah. uh, growing up for some reason, I adopted that. Oh, mindset. OK. It was just weird. Uh, yeah. I don't even think I realized that till this podcast, but <laughs> right now, right That's in awesome. this moment, I'm like ready. I can it see. Now. I'm all I God. See we got to talk about this later. <laughs> I can see that. And I can see. I think people do have that approach in marriages. Yeah. You know, a lot of times people just concede to, okay, whatever. I'm just gonna say I was wrong, but then they hold on to resentment, yeah. and they're yeah. really feeling like oh, there's all this betrayal that would happen, but they're not yeah. gonna say anything about it because they don't yeah. want to stir up anything, and they're yeah. gonna sure. just we, defer to the other person. Okay, go ahead. And yeah. Who are you sparing in that? you know mentality right. really anyway right because yeah. then you're going to suffer and ultimately yeah. your marriage is going to suffer because you're yeah. not going to be what you were saying whole yeah. even yeah. you know if if two people can't be whole in themselves they're never going to be whole together no. yeah. and it's we have to be able true. to heal and yeah. be whole and complete and yeah. completely vulnerable yes. you know that yeah. some of the mo like the most intimate times that me and Brittany have had it was in complete vulnerability mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's like after this moment it's like a huge fresh breath mm -hmm. it's like mm -hmm. wow that was actually amazing yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. and if we're working through something hard but like we say the very vulnerable honest things and yeah. Yeah. it's like we get this chance to actually see each other because yeah. we're not hiding behind anything mm -hmm. yeah. and then we feel seen as like so the person who's expressing and we get and it feels like wow i had the chance to actually see who you are and what's happening inside of you yeah. you know yeah. in this moment yeah and that's good i was actually going to say um just before i had the thought i wanted to make sure i get get this out there um <laughs> about marriage you know like a another what am i trying to say um pro, what am i trying to say like another pro for getting married or like a you know we've talked a lot about a lot of the heavy, the heavy parts but like one of the benefits one of the reasons i would um I'm not a recruiter for weddings but <laughs> or for marriages but you know what i mean like one of the things i would really want everybody to to catch too and you just said it is um and this ties into what you said you know uh, I'm going to ask God to give us the, what do you say, the best marriage, best marriage. ever and all that. And um, and I think that's awesome and beautiful. One thing that I feel like I'm learning is, which just goes back to the power of the things that we say and declare, um, uh, the power we have to pull down, the, you know, the glory. Or, okay. The, 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 you know, because we're, we're seated in the heavenly places and then we incarnate on earth and right. we bring the kingdom wherever we are. And then we, when we, um, so if, if we're uh, asking for the ocean, but we can only carry a bucket of water at a time, um, God, in His love, will 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 bring wave after wave, so that we can um, so that the entire ocean doesn't come at the same time because we've asked for the entire ocean and mm. just completely wipe us off the map, right? Because really, we're only able to hold a cup at a time or a, a pail at a time. Um, and I feel like it's similar in marriage. Like you're asking for this grand 
right. beautiful thing. And the Lord is, is going to go, okay, then you, because you're my son and I love you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to discipline you, love you, grow you, mature you into that. And how does he do that? He does that by bringing opposition into our life to, to show us areas uh, to grow, giving us opportunities to mature, to mm. to see this thing that we want in our life f- flourish and grow into that thing. Does Can that make you sense? Increase your bucket, right? Is that what you're yeah, saying? yes. He increases your, your capacity. He does yeah. that by through discipline, and and that's a word that has a lot of connotation for us in different ways from our childhood, whatever. It can look different ways, but I'm talking about his discipline, which is which is true discipline and true love and true fatherly wisdom. Mm -hmm. He deals with each child according to who he made them to be, and he brings exactly what they need in their life to challenge them, to call out of them what's in them. And so to tie that all together with marriage, the most beautiful thing to me about all of that is in your life, whether you're single or married, because of course it's you can live a beautiful, powerful, Mm -hmm. purposeful life being single. Yeah. Right. That's mm-hmm. scripture. Yeah. And that's important. And I want to say that. Um, but in this marriage, I have this incredible um, gift where these revelations that I have, these things about me that the Lord is helping me overcome and mature into this, you know, day by day. Mm-hmm. I then get to share in the joy of that with this person who's also going through that in her own way with the Lord and together in, in ways together. And so it's like I have this lifetime partner of enjoying uh, the beautiful sunrises and sunsets and all this stuff that I am going to experience in life, not just the hardships and the challenges, you know, mm-hmm. of, of growing and development, um, though that comes, but, but the beauty, the, the, the hard things, the easy things, the fun, the joy, all of it, we share in that together mm-hmm. in, a be- mm-hmm. in a beautiful yeah. partnership. And I'm not alone. Uh, I, I'm thinking of that one movie, uh, is a jumper and he's jumping all over the world. Okay. And then yeah. he, I just see him sitting and I think it's like an aerial drone shot of him on like a minaret or something at the top. And he's just, it's incredible. He's enjoying this beauty. And I just, I just remember this one scene of him sitting by himself, taking it all in. And it's like, how much better is it to take all of it in with Somebody. someone else? You know? Right. And so yeah. that, that's the beauty. One of the beautiful things yeah. for me. It's like, it's an opportunity to, have a ride or die your whole life. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, Through serious. all of that. That's right. awesome. Yes. Um, you were continuing it though. The we, story? Yeah. We, <laughs> yeah. we got off again. And I love it. It's like a street that has like a ton of cul-de-sacs. Yeah. And we're just <laughs> like, like, keep going the wrong direction. Right every cul-de-sac. <laughs> we're just like a mailman. We got to hit every box. That's right, dude. <laughs> this is like part one, two, three, and four. No. Um, it's a little bit more We might like have FedEx. to do a part two. Okay. Because we might have to close it right up pretty on. soon. Because cool, cool. I uh, think our fi- our film, our yeah, film. my film camera yes. might run out. Totally. <laughs> a guy behind me. <laughs> he's <laughs> all, he's all tired. Ch- wrapped it up. Where have you been? I didn't even see you. Wow. Um, no. So yeah, unique phase. And then I would say like we're in a reconstruction phase right now Hmm. where the Lord is really just our, the glue between Cliff and I is truly word and revelation. And like, I know this sounds, I hope you guys will hear my heart, but like deep crying out to deep Hmm. where there's this element of like, he is on this journey because, you know, I can't tell Cliff who he is was created to be only his creator can do that. You know what I mean? But as he's on this journey, and also I just want to say, ah, rewinding Cliff's physical appearance changed after he, in that like transition, it was a trip. Mm -hmm. It was like, he was absolutely oppressed to keep something was on him to keep him silent. And it was like taking the life from him. And then after it was over, I was like, who are you? You know what I mean? So there's definitely like this newness Mm. too. And so it was like, we had those first seven years, about three or four years of deconstruction. And then what's cool about it is it's like toe in the water. Mm, I don't know if I want to do that. You know what I mean? Like there's been hesitancy, but the more that we dive into revelation with the father, the, the closer Cliff and I are becoming. And Mm. I would say like what our marriage is now, I couldn't have even, pictured it mm-hmm. i couldn't have even like this is what i want my marriage to be you know what i mean right. like when i was 20 there's literally no way that i could have been like i want deep revelation and into the mystery and you know <laughs> what i mean like i i was i what could i have known back then but so yeah i would say like where we're at now <laughs> i can't speak for you cliff but no i'm just kidding um just i almost feel like 
there is a newness to our relationship and um we're in like a re reconstruction phase yeah and um i don't feel alone yeah. in in this marriage for the first time and what i mean by that is like i genuinely know that the father is in this marriage with us mm. you know what i'm saying and yeah. yeah and i think that uh he was a part of it but it was like principle based not like intimacy based mm, yeah mm. how long have, would you say you've been in that kind of phase with your marriage Re- like what do you mean like reconstruction or yeah like the reconstruction and feeling like the in like the that dynamic of of god being involved in not just a principal way but you know intimately and relationally yeah. four or five I mean, years for me i would say like three okay like the last three years well, three months I'm like, i would say like <laughs> the last few days three days yeah. probably it's like really really um, fresh <laughs> <laughs> no, I would say like like three years. We experienced this crazy cool miracle with our house that we're in, and it just like ex- opened my mind to like, oh yeah, God does miracles. And mm. then, I don't know. I would say like it's been like three years mm. of um, letting go and trusting the Lord. And there's this element of like personal wholeness and mm. mm-hmm. personal growth. And then the father is just like bringing us together, which is cool. Mm. Mm-hmm. I always wonder mm. what it would be like to have a baby now <laughs> instead of like earlier. But I don't know if I'm going to do that. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be honest. Um, I'm going to be honest. Tip, I don't know. Right now. There's a practical tip I just want to put out there for anybody that's um, watching that. I'll take a tip for sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And it's something that I, I I, I, I want to say I wish I would have known. But again, it's the thing when you do that, you just go down the road of like poo-pooing your past and that yeah. doesn't help anyone so it's like <laughs> i know it now and it's beautiful and i'm gonna keep moving forward right, right and that's this it's that literally um and and hang with me but literally the the past doesn't exist mm-hmm. we reconstruct it memories we reconstruct memories now mm-hmm. and relive them in our mind but it actually it doesn't exist right, right only now right. exists and the future is potential and um the reason that's important in a marriage the reason that it's important to know that um, God, uh, his mercies are new every morning, I'll say, that he's a God of newness. Literally every second of every day, our cells are dying and new ones are being made. Um, is um, There's going to be situations when uh, you're going to, ah, there's that word again, make each other angry, you know, and or whatever. Um, but realizing now that like literally I have this beautiful opportunity to start each day as though, that those things didn't like this yeah. person that I'm with, she's brand new today and I'm brand new today. Mm-hmm. And the opportunity that we have is brand new mm-hmm. to not go back over here and go, remember this where you let me down? Remember this mm-hmm. where you weren't, you know, that doesn't exist actually like, anymore. Wait, what? <laughs> <Yeah. kidding. laughs> today is literally brand new, brand new mercy starting from, from day one yeah. Yeah. going on. I just feel like for me, at least that's been really powerful. Like, mm-hmm thing uh tool to carry with me um because literally that's in every aspect of every relationship mm. everywhere we go where we have this opportunity to treat every person that we meet as though we don't know what they've done before mm. as that we don't know what their past is so to speak and um i'm not saying there isn't a place to go back we've talked about that going back and god pulls things up but we do have a tendency i think to like almost idolize our pasts mm. um we really uh, maybe to a fault sometimes um, like immortalize past history events, mm. you know, mm. and it really, um, I'm not sure that that's always beneficial. Um, uh, at, at least in this context, mm. uh, let's keep it in this lane. Um, every day, every day, brand spanking new opportunity, right? As though this is the first day. And I just feel like that's been a huge revelation. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> wow no that'd be that's a huge um a huge shift mm-hmm. and when it comes to things like when it if it's difficult to forgive somebody yeah you know being able to have that perspective yeah. um mm-hmm. i think that there's always a like you mentioned there's always a place you know when you need to address certain things yeah. work through things mm-hmm. but then when that's been once that's been done it's like that's in the past yep. like it's gone yeah. now yeah and yeah. if we can see it that way yeah. and actually have that perspective it would make letting things go yeah. and finding freedom you know to see the person yeah. as they are right now not as they were you know last year two years yeah. ago ten years yeah. ago 
but as they are right now, not even yesterday, you know, it's yeah. like <laughs> that, what, what, we, what happened was dealt with. And now we are here. Yeah. And I want to be here with you. Yeah. And I don't always know the things the Lord has spoken to her in the night. Mm-hmm. She doesn't always know what he's spoken to me in the night. Yeah. And, and I think that happens in corporate environments too. So it, I, you know, I don't know, I don't work here, but uh, in, in a corporate church setting, you know, I, I know I was in the military for a long time. I know there's interpersonal things, hmm. right? That's just life with people, but mm-hmm. it's so applicable there too. It's like, I yeah. don't know this person that, that said this crazy thing last week and I found it offensive and hurtful or, or whatever. I don't know what the Lord's been speaking in their heart every night when they right. sleep since then. Yeah. Um, so if I'm still operating based yeah, on this, good. the way this person was a year ago in my interactions with them today, it's like, it's just unfruitful and unfair and, yeah. and not how he deals with us. But yeah. if I can go deep cries out to deep, same spirit of God mm-hmm. that's in me is in them. The same, the spirit that's at work in mm-hmm. me is in it was at work and, and, and her and, and you guys. And, and, um, anyway, there's that yeah. tool. Yeah. What there grace. It is. Amen. Cool. Grace. Yeah. yeah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I think we do have to cool. wrap it. Yep. Boggies. I hope you've enjoyed this yes. conversation make sure to spot up fo- make sure to blah, blah, blah. Spotify, yes. make sure to follow thank you guys for being here first <laughs> make yeah. sure yeah. Thank yeah. thanks for having us you guys You're are awesome. Thank awesome. You. awesome we'll have to do a part two because we got so much yeah, more to sure. talk about for like sure. absolutely yeah. make sure to follow us Spotify iTunes Instagram we got our TikTok back what the heck wow yeah <laughs> look at that <laughs> yeah all of those uh, Your Brain on God we love you guys and uh, we'll see you back on the next episode of Your Brain on God peace out later